A solar eclipse happened, which means lots of blinded eyes and conspiracy theories. Christians keep asking for more faith-based content, but is that really a good thing? Also, Moses becomes a Netflix star. We talk about all that and more on this episode of Faith and Pop Culture. Hey, well, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to episode number five of the Faith and Pop Culture podcast. It is me, your host, Daniel, and I am joined, as I always am, by the moon to my solar eclipse, Mr. Samuel David Camp. What is up? Not too much. Uh, thankfully, I didn't burn my retinas yesterday. You weren't the, uh, staring straight at the sun to see the beautiful. I try, you know, I try to, you know, just get a little quick, quick little glimpse, you know, of squinted eye. But, you know, I, I felt uh, the ambiance change when when the eclipse occurred. Yeah, God dimming the lights, yeah. uh, setting uh, the mood. Uh, but the eclipse, that is sort of being the big thing that's been going on. Like the yeah, the, everyone I've, has been talking about the eclipse and that happened. Did you actually like? Di- in all seriousness, did you see any of the eclipse? Like, no, I didn't have any of the uh, proper eyewear, unfortunately. Although I heard a story about my great grandmother when there was an eclipse here back in her day. She just smoked a piece of glass, so like over a fire, to get it, you know, the soot on the glass, and use that to look up at the uh, solar eclipse. And I thought that's pretty hardcore. Like. I like that. See, because I was looking up, uh, again, where we live, we're not like, in the, whatever they call it. Path the, of totality. The path. Uh, so we'd get this a, a partial, and I was, uh, like, I realized I hadn't planned well. So I was, like, looking up, like, YouTube and stuff, like, how do you, like, make, oh. like, like, you know how handy I am you know, <laughs> with stuff. And I was, like, I don't trust, like, the future of my site to my own, like, handy Your own work. <laughs> like, crafty devices. <laughs> the do-it-yourself, uh, you know, tinfoil and get a box that's six feet long and all these things. They just do three layers of sunglasses. That's got to help, right? So like a modern, uh, you know, a modern child, I sat inside looking at my computer of pictures as things are dimming. Uh, yeah. It, is, it was kind of interesting, just the, it's, it's like being in a room with a lamp on versus, like, the overhead light. It was kind of a little bit eerie, but it was cool. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, you could tell something was not normal but i did want us to talk about you know just briefly about the eclipse i think like you know a scientific phenomena isn't necessarily something you think of as like pop culture you know like yeah you think of pop culture you think of like comic books and like you know taylor swift albums and stuff like you don't think of you know the moon coming in front of the sun celestial uh, alignment <laughs> but it's been everywhere like this yeah it is one of those sort of rare uh, you know, like celebrities are talking, like there's pictures about it, like, you know, like hockey teams are like posting. It's, logos. it's all selfies of people looking up, you know, with <laughs> their funny glasses on. <laughs> um, so it, it has been everywhere. And it is like there's just not a whole lot of things like that, like that. Yeah. You know, like obviously not. It's not universal because not everyone is in right. the path. Like, you know, uh, only uh, the select, the you know chosen few get to like, see the, the whole thing. But like. But it is universal, at least like around where we live, in terms of like this people talking. Everyone knew there was an eclipse. Yeah. Um, and I think there's something. Well, to I, that. I think it's just something that's so rare that can bring a country together, at least for, you know, four minutes or whatever, <laughs> however long. Stop it, hating each other long enough to say that, like, you know, nature is cool. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think, ev- you know, even that, like, as maybe trite as that sounds, like, I, I do think, you know, I guess things that bring our country together are as rare as eclipses, maybe. (laughs) Um, I I don't know uh, what significance that has, but it is cool. Like, I think it's nice to be reminded that, one, like, there is, like, a lot of stuff happening outside of ourselves and more broadly, like, outside of our planet. And I I don't know. I just think it's – I think it's good for humanity, at least for the U.S., to be reminded that you know there's there's bigger things happening, and to sort of get out of your own little bubble, your own whatever you're obsessed with or whatever you're raging about, political or social or whatever. Not that those things aren't important, but it's just nice to kind of see the bigger picture sometimes. Yeah, and like scripture is very clear that like creation, you know, is like God's handiwork. You know, they proclaim the glory yeah. of God, and like you know. Like it uses very like vocal communicating God through creation that I think obviously not everyone that sees an eclipse is going to be, you know, attribute that to God's glory or, you know, they're just going to have scientific explanations if you're not a believer. But 
I do think it is significant to like, like it's not like the Super Bowl that brings everyone in the country to get. We're all talking about the Super Bowl. Like it's God's creation. Like we're all yeah. focusing on creation. And like you know, if we believe Scripture, which we do, like there's power to that and to creation that like to have so many people focusing on just how cool creation is. is yeah. Significant. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's amazing. And it's, a, it's just such a great reminder uh, for us. Which another reminder is that uh, people can also be kind of crazy and That's eclipses uh, can reveal God's glory and also our uh, insanity. Fallen, uh, <laughs> in, insanity. I did want to sort of one of the, the things that has been surrounding, uh, you know, eclipsing the eclipse, at least if you follow social media, is just some of these sort of like conspiracy theories about the eclipse and like these doomsday prophecies and like like if you go by the media coverage like that's just like the almost the default position of Christians. Is yeah, that, you know, which is a reminder: don't ever go by the media coverage. Yeah, <laughs> it's a rule of thumb. It's a rule uh, of thumb. Like uh, period. That is. The, yeah, like don't just just don't take that at face value. Like do. Do a little digging uh, w- when the media is all in arms about one thing or the other. Like, typically, there's more to it than. Yeah, because a lot certain segments of the media, like they want Christians and people to appear crazy. And like sure. now with you know the beauty of social media and the internet, like it's not hard to find someone, like, whether even if they're like disingenuous and sort of grifting on it or like just trying to cause a stir, or some like anonymous like you know egghead profile and it's like oh they said this therefore um that it is a sort of a reminder that i although that seems to be, get a lot of coverage i think agenda driven that i it's sort of like you know all these controversies like the starbucks holiday cup and things that like yeah the the amount of coverage compared to like the people that actually believe in these things right. is uh, there there's a discrepancy but it is unfortunate that so much of that uh, does get uh, covered uh, one of the things that is not unfortunate uh, at least we uh, don't think so is the amount of faith-based content that we have been uh, getting kind of trickle out through in uh, you know obviously like in cinema and even on like streaming and television and obviously yeah. like music and some of the you know and like books they've been going stronger with like christian content longer and like more successfully than sort of cinema is like catching up uh, in in recent years, and we sort of even like on this podcast, we've we keep we've touched on almost every week. It seems like like we had the Baxters and we had Ordinary Angels, and like we've various aspects and like Cabrini and the sort of how do you do faith based stuff or Christian um, art, and it's one of those things that seems like Christians want more of it. Like you constantly see, and yeah. when we get it, people are praising that we have it, and we need to support it because we want more things like this. That I thought it would be worth. Um, just talking a bit about that like what is we want more christian art or kind of the more trendy faith-based content is sort of the the way that it gets referred to like but what do we mean by that like what is like when we want more of it what is faith-based or christian content and is the way that we're typically think about it necessarily the best or the healthiest way about like what comes to mind for you like when you think of like faith-based content or christian art yeah. What sort of pops into your mind? Well, faith-based movies, at least, I think of uh, Sherwood, um, based here, I think, in our our own state of Georgia, who gave us uh, great and powerful movies like Facing the Giants, <laughs> you may have heard of, or uh, Fireproof, I think maybe was one of those. Fireproof, War Room. War Room. And I think they certainly have uh, a place um but to me that's what comes to mind when i think of faith-based and it's maybe to uh pull a little bit from karen swallow prior it's very uh sentimentally driven um movies uh and i think a lot of the maybe art that goes along with it is also um just a it's more affirming in your worldview than it is good art, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's essentially shorthand for if you're a Christian, you'll probably not like this. Agree, agree with, with it. Yeah, like it, yeah. Either the people are making it, share your faith, or oftentimes like the the con the, the characters me- the message in it, of it. Yeah, uh, shares because I, I know like usually it used to be we talk about Christian art, Christian music. Um, I mean, it's still like music on iTunes is still classified as 
like Christian and gospel. Like it's, yeah. I, I think, I mean, at least of the main kind of categories, it's the only category that's classified by like the lyrical content or like the belief yeah. of the, you know, like heavy metal. You can sing about dragons. You can sing about, you know, the end of the world. Like, you know, pop, they sing about a bunch of different stuff and they believe different things. And, but like Christian, you know, if you go to Christian music on iTunes, like you get metal and you get punk and you get pop and you get worship and you, right. get, you know, it's, it is sort of, it's unique in that sense that it's yeah. of filters down to like, if you're a Christian, like it's all the genres, but you'll probably like, you'll agree with that. But I feel like with, especially with films, cause like when I think of Christian art, just cause I'm like a guy that got a PhD in like aesthetics, like I think of like, you know, the Sistine Chapel. Like I think of like yeah. Christian art, you know, Michelangelo painting the, you know, di the David or like different things like that, or Adam and creation of Adam painting. Like, so I feel like with, no, David with, was sculpted, Daniel. Uh, sorry, it's uh, been out of the program for a few years now. But the um, where I feel like now with films, it's, so it's become more like faith based. Like, yeah, this, the movie's not necessarily just about like biblical characters. It's it's more about Christians. Like it's in yeah, years. it's about the Christian religion, or at least the Christian worldview, is sort of the main thrust of the message of the movie or or what yeah and it's like i feel like there's two ways to look at that because there's the positive side I always start with the positive yeah it's like it's good it's convenient like it's helpful to know that like it's yeah you know like although in a second we might push back on some of it like i use those terminology in our, the reviews we do and like that's just the that is sort of the way we think about you know hey this is a faith-based movie and i know what that means you probably know what that means like you know, like yeah. there is sort of this shared, um, and like it is helpful to like if you're looking for music or something, and like you don't know these artists to go to Christian category and like, yeah. hey, this is all Christian music. Like you know, I gotta listen to see what genres and stuff they are, and I that I I don't think it's necessarily like it's it's easy to criticize faith based stuff and like the terminology and like what it represents, but like there's a reason why we have those terms and like, and I think it can be helpful or am I crazy? No, I, th I think you certainly can be, uh, it can be helpful with those kind of terms. Um, but again, I, it, it, it almost, I think when, when thought about in those, um, categories and those, that terminology, I, I feel like it can be very, um, seem like, almost just kind of a marketing thing okay just a marketing category or marketing terminology almost that it's like this is all stuff that people who go to church will like and will agree with and so it's just sort of this catch-all bucket for the kinds of things that people who go to church appreciate or you know think the same about um which I think it can also just can make it a little more tricky when when you I think try and step out of that and think more broadly about art. Yeah, I think it's I feel like it's a a decent starting point, perhaps for yeah. like how to think about it. It's just that, and I, again, I don't think a lot of people of us do think beyond that starting point but I, yeah the further you go thinking about what does it mean to be faith-based or christian art th like you very quickly start hitting walls and dead ends and like yeah inconsistencies and like it's a very limited understanding of what art is and like what you know what makes christian art like you know like the example i sometimes use is i mean for in one sense it it, it sort of barricades out certain artists like you can be a christian that you know, you write worship songs, you know, where you praise Jesus, you're a Christian musician, you're a Christian artist. But like, if you write, you're a piano player, you like come up with melodies and like, there's no lyrical content. Like, is that Christian music? Like, is it, yeah. is it, is it Christian music just because you're a Christian? Like if an atheist wrote that same melody, is that now not Christian music? Like it just becomes very confusing. Yeah. Or like, you know, like abstract artists and things like, you know, it's easy to say, Hey, that's Christian art when it's like, that's Jesus and the painting on the cross. Like it's harder when it's like, that's a sunset, you know, like, yeah, we don't even know who the artist was, if they were Christian or not. Like it's, and I wonder like, is it, 
I wonder if it's like it, it. I guess in today's culture, is it linking too heavily the artist to the art as well? Like, do you think it it's too much of an emphasis? Like when people think about faith based, there's too much of an emphasis on the artist as as well as whatever art they're producing. I do think there is some of that. Like, well, you know, even like music that we wouldn't listen to if it was like secular. But because we know the artist is a Christian, like the lyrics might have nothing to do with. Yeah. You know, like I know back when I was growing up, like the band Thousand Foot Crutch, uh, I remember like they had a new album come out and like the first song they released was like, it's a total party song. Like it's just like in a concert place, dan- you, know, you know, bopping in the club and just like rock, you know, rock and yeah, roll. And, like, yeah. I remember just all these comments like, oh, like, you know, are you guys still a Christian band? Like it's just sort of this, you know, because the lyrics didn't like necessarily affirm that. But like, but because we knew that they were Christians, a lot of people were like, "Oh yeah, we love this kind of music." But like, if it was secular music, if they weren't believers, yeah, we would probably write that off as like, "That's just so shallow. There's no depth to that. Like, it's not right. Christian art. I can't listen to this party song." Like, so there is, I think, a sense that we we link too closely to, and like again, we don't know the faith of people, and like, we don't know how they're genuine. Like, right. you know, we assume they uh, they are. But I think probably my biggest um, why I think some of the distinctions are can be problematic is that I think it it, it reinforces a very strict like secular s- sacred secular divide. Yeah, of, like this is Christian, this is not, um, and especially the sort of things that we put into those categories um, end up being we're really talking more about like religion, like religious activity, yeah, and, like not religious activity, like the. You know, like Christian art is things that are very overtly religious in themes mm-hmm. as opposed to a much more, I think, biblical understanding of what it means to like be a new creation and like, you know, everything be be different about us and the way we see the world. And like, you know, I think it it just it it set it sort of reinforces, I think, harmful um like philosophies or stuff about this faith at a foundational level. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think that sacred versus secular thing has been, I think does cause a lot of harm, uh, especially for, for just people when they're just trying to live their lives and they sort of start categorizing their life in those terms. It's like, well, I do my Christian stuff at church and church activities, but I'm just a normal, you know, everyday person when I'm at work and and I think a lot of people get kind of confused as to how do we actually live the Christian life because it's like well I'm Christian you know when I'm you know serving the poor or in worship service but like how do I I think people just don't know how to be Christian like in the workforce or at their job or in their art or whatever that may be and I think it's also interesting that I feel like Christian like art, the creative discipline, I guess, of vocation is sort of the only one that kind of has this, like you don't, you don't go see a Christian doctor or like you don't hire a Christian contractor to build your house. I mean, like, you might, but you they, might. Wouldn't, they wouldn't be, that's not how they would identify. It's like, right. what and do you do for a living? I'm a, I'm know, a Christian, a Christian fast food worker. Like that's right. Yeah. It's, they're Christian because they are Christian. Right. And they're doing that. But it's not because, yeah, in the same. And again, sense. I just think it kind of comes back to I feel like there's just this need, especially in Christianity, to categorize things. And so what, people need, they have this need for better or worse to put labels on stuff. And I think it's like, well, well so, so you're an artist. Like, so is it like Christian art that you do? Or is it like. You know, people, I, I feel like they just kind of have to have these, like, buckets that they need to put other people in. And so it's like, well, I, I need to know, like, well, that's such a broad well, thing. Well, and, it's, it's, and like, it's just not a, it's not an easy, like, bucket to be into. Because I know, like, the, the classic, which you used to always hear, I think you still do, but I know it used to be a big thing uh, back when, like, a lot of Christian bands were, like, breaking through into, like, the, the mainstream is, like, you'd have these like interviews and they'd be like, you know, we're not a Christian band. Like we're Christians in, in a band. band. And it's this. Yeah. And, like, again, I, 
hundred percent understand what they're trying to say of like, hey, we're Christians, but like our lyrics aren't, you know, we enter the house of the Lord, hallelujah. You know, it's right. We're singing about other things. And I think the fact that we have to like that so many of these artists like had to make the distinction that I, I you know, like we're we're Christian. We're just, you know, what like not not every activity or thing that we ever think is like religious. Right. Like religious activity, like Sunday morning worship. I think exposes some of the the limitations of how yeah. we think of like like I think a lot of ways we think of faith based and Christian stuff as Sunday morning like right to be Christian is to be in church on Sunday morning and like if you can't play it on Sunday morning then it's not Christian yeah and like if yeah. you're you know if you're singing about you know just other experiences in life like are you a Christian anymore like you didn't even mention Jesus and it's which like outside of music we would like frown upon that mindset of like, hey, you're a Christian to church. Like that's an important part of who you are. But like you're also a Christian when you're like at your kid's baseball game and brushing your right. teeth and like, right. you know, watching sports and like going for a walk and like falling in love. And like, like that's, you're still a Christian and all that. Like, it, it impacts. Yeah. And like, I feel like we recognize that outside of music, but like when it comes to music or like movies or whatever, it's like, well, we, for it to be Christian, we kind of need the Sunday morning stuff. Like we need, yeah. we need a lot of Jesus references and like, you know, biblical proof texts and like you know right things and proper theology and all that yeah and i think some of that comes from like just the fact that that is the expectation for for music and like for for the arts and i think that does bleed into how we think of just our life as like christianity is religious stuff rather than like hey we can be christian and like enjoy the solar eclipse or like whatever it can be so i think there's I think the, and we'll probably get into it at some point, like, I feel like it is something that needs to be reevaluated. How you do that, I think, is more complicated. Right. It, uh, it is a very tangled, uh, tangled web of terminology and, and categories. And yeah, what, what, what's a better way? I guess, what's the solution then for, um, for replacing that? Or, do, I mean, it may, may not need replacement, but, you know, how, how can we start to rethink about how we think about art and yeah because because that's i think that's important because it's not just that like the semantics of like hey we just need a new word for it that works better like, yeah i think it's our whole approach to art that like as a christian like things that we see as like kind of god in yeah. isn't just the way we typically think of the very stereotypical faith-based like these characters are going to be christians there's going to be a conversion right. in the third act like that we we can actually like see the glory of God and like find worship in stuff beyond that because it because like we can in real life right because it's interesting that nowhere in this conversation we talk about like beauty or wonder or awe in regards to like faith based and I think that's kind of part of the problem too right like it's we we have like it's it's so sort of narrowly focused on like the content the message. And it leaves very little room for creating something that's beautiful or magnificent or awe-inspiring. And, it's, and we don't know what to do with some of those things. And so, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's in, in need of adjustment. Yeah, guess, especially if we be. want better art. Like, I think a certain, yeah. like propaganda is like the worst kind of art because it's just all message. Right. And I think to see faith-based is only religious sort of sermonizing yeah is why we don't always get the best faith-based art but speaking of faith-based or christian uh art uh, i did want to note uh we don't need to get uh too into it but i think, do think it is uh a noteworthy development in pop culture uh, is that the bible is making its mark on netflix i know uh, there's a lot of True things story. you can find on netflix not necessarily always things that you'd want your kids to watch or you'd want to watch yourself or that you'd want to watch if Jesus is sitting right next to you on the couch. But sometimes uh, there is stuff that uh, hits a little closer to home. Uh, so there's a, a, a new series that just dropped. It's, uh, I think, what a uh, three, four episode uh, series, Testament, the Story of Moses. Um, I was actually sent this early uh, and just wasn't able to watch it. Uh, so I haven't seen it yet. And promptly ignored it. Uh, yeah, probably uh, got lost in my inbox. Uh, did have the opportunity to uh, potentially to uh, interview some of the creators and just w- got too busy uh, to, do, to do that. But I do see that it's, 
thankfully, I think uh, not everyone seemed to be as busy as I was because it was like the number two most watched like on the charts of like streaming. Um, again, I, there's a lot of nuances we won't get into, but like those charts are, are difficult to discern because they go by minutes and there's different aspects yeah. to how, what they rate and what uh, what streamers reveal. And like, but like, regardless of like the specifics, like a lot of people watch. Like, I think it's like 200 or 708 million minutes uh, watched. It was like the number two behind uh, Three Body Problem, which is like a big hit uh, kind of sci-fi uh, show. And I think it is kind of cool. Yeah, I think I think it's amazing, and I think. Um I feel like we've we've mentioned it before on here, but I just think the the Bible and the narratives within the Bible are very much uh, prime for uh, cinematic adaptation. And so in some ways I'm surprised that there aren't more sort of biblical narrative driven films or miniseries. Do you like, know why that is? I think hot take. I don't really think it's a hot take. Did you ever see Noah? Like the, I don't know that I did see, I, but I heard that it was. Like, I mean, it's made by like, um, what's his name? Starts with an A, Darren. Darren Aronofsky. Yeah. Okay. Who, I yeah. mean, is like a an atheist, but like, like it was such a weird, bizarre movie, and it was like the story of Noah, and it's biblical, but there's also like rock monsters and things that aren't biblical, and I, I feel like it displeased no one, and I like guess it just became this big thing that, I I feel like it scared people away from like, mm. dramatizing like I think we have like the chosen and some some of those things that like a little more safe and like it's Jesus, but like, yeah, like getting like a, you know, like King David story or right? yeah. like exploring some of these. Uh, and I think uh, a distinction with, again, like I said, I haven't watched the the series. It is like a multi-religious production. Like it's, yeah. like, I mean, Moses is an important figure in like Islam and other religion, like, you know, and like, you know, Judaism and Christianity. And I think like the creators of this it's are, are an, it's coming from. interface yeah, maybe production. A better, uh, yeah. A better term for it. It's like, so I think like some of the people they like, interview about it are like Muslims and stuff, and like so it's not. I mean, is it faith based? Is it Christian? Uh, how would our labels? Uh, yeah, I don't know what what label. I mean, I mean faith Moses, based it's technically. Biblical, yeah, uh, or we would assume it was, but I do think it is interesting, and I I think too, um, maybe this is my own little soapbox, but like you hear a lot that like Hollywood just doesn't make, like you, you know you don't get biblical stuff or faith based stuff. Which is like in doing five episodes of this podcast, like almost every week we have a new faith based movie or TV show or like streaming yeah. show. And like, like we do get it. Like there are, um, there are lots of like kind of faith based yeah. content. And I think some of that narrative of like, you know, big bad Hollywood would never tell a faith based story. Like typically that's promoted by other companies that are, are trying, trying to make faith based stories and they're trying yeah. to sell it. But like there are movies being made within the system. Like, and I think like, like if you consider it like a genre, which is I don't think it necessarily even a helpful way to do it, but like faith based, like there's probably as much of that genre as any other. Like you probably get more faith based films than you get like mainline comedy movies in a year. Like, yeah. Or even horror movies, or like, you know, definitely Western movies. Like. Yeah, yeah. It's just I think as Christians we want, like we sort of want like a Christian Hollywood, so we want like parallel. Like Hollywood made this many movies. And only this many of them were faith based. Right. Where if you think of it more in terms of just like a, a type of movie, there are lots of them. Yeah, I, I just don't think the the idea that they're not making religious stories or faith based stories or Christian movies just I, I think you can you don't have to look very far to see that there are lots of those both you know whatever mainstream Hollywood is and also from uh, more religious or christian studios whose sort of sole purpose is to produce more of christian related content and do you know what's happening like probably as we speak right now in california is that there are several execs sitting at a board table looking at two 708 million minutes watch of the moses documentary yeah and they're like we need to get in on that like exactly i do think the success the increased success of these sort of things and like interest and like is going to lead to yeah well to even more you know that you know that there's going to be more about like with the success of the chosen and obviously now with this uh the moses success like the idea that hollywood would wouldn't like do something about that because it's christian is crazy because like if we want to refer to hollywood as a monolith and it's like hollywood likes to make successful things i.e money and so it's like 
well, hey, there's an audience for this. Like, those are a lot of eyeballs watching. Well, people those think films, of Hollywood so as being very anti-Christian, which I think is probably a hasty generalization. But I, yeah, regardless, I think Hollywood is more pro-money than they are anti-religion. That's like, that's if it makes point. money, like, yeah, they're gonna whether they're coming at it from a faith perspective. Like, yeah, they're hap- They're happy to take christian dollars uh, yeah. at the, you know at box office things yeah christian checks uh, yeah. cash you as spend well spend those as... the same as you can any yeah. other uh, so i do think some of the success and like of these things like it just shows there is an interest in faith yeah. sort of stories and like again like we shared a couple weeks ago like you know like dune and uh, you know kung fu panda like even like not faith-based stories but like there's a lot of religion and you know spiritual yeah. stories that are succeeding uh, even like in a wider sense that I do think. Well, and, and I do, I do think there, there is just a lot of interest in spiritual themes. I think as many people, you know, even in our generation are perhaps just disenchanted with organized religion. I think there is a, a, a huge swath of people who are interested in spirituality. And I think people are trying to figure out what is that, what does that mean? And, and, they know that there's more there's probably more to life than just what they see and so i think you see a lot of people seeking seeking that in some form or another and so i think there is a great desire to see those ideas explored on screen perhaps more so than you know in generations past yeah and i do think you know even just looking ahead like the movie calendar there's a bunch more coming out this year i get yeah i think hollywood's noticed and then they've succeeded it's just sort of the circle uh, that I think Christians can affirm. But speaking of movies, faith-based Christian art or otherwise, uh, you know, there's always new movies coming out every week, which leads us to the next segment of this episode. We have out now and coming soon. So we've got a couple of uh, movies that are out now. Um, we have not seen either of these. Uh, we we talked about it in the previous segment, Testament. Story of Moses. Which that's... I would be curious if, if any of you watching, listening, like if you did check this out, like I just don't think I'm gonna have time to go back and watch this because like, there's always new stuff that I gotta review. But I'm curious if it's good. Like yeah, you know, like I'd be it, curious too. Uh, I don't have Netflix, but if I maybe have to borrow somebody's. So log, I mean, if it's not, I don't take it as a you know. It was endorsed by the Faith and Pop Culture Podcast. Yeah, uh, we we don't uh, know. Although something that probably I know, even though I haven't seen it, that isn't good, is uh, Godzilla Godzilla Versus. Kong uh, New Empire. So I ended up missing that movie. I was supposed to review it. I know you uh, hate that. And I, I really didn't feel a whole lot of sadness. Did you but, feel a Godzilla-shaped uh, void in your heart uh, uh, when you and I, were and I to... appreciated that whole. Uh, <laughs> I anticipate leaving it empty. Uh, I wasn't excited about this movie. Like I, I wanted to review it because it's a movie, and I think it's actually done decent uh, yeah. at, the, at the box office. It's shame on America or the world for, for making it a success. But it's just not my like, – Godzilla Minus One, like, probably my favorite movie of last year such a good movie this looks like everything that that's not like it's a spectacle yeah. and like even some of the early other like, critic reviews are like you know a lot of uh, punching monsters not a whole lot of human hearts and it's like okay that, yeah. that's uh, that, that tracks that, that lives up to but hey, again if you saw that if you guys saw that uh, let us know if it was good uh, but Sp- speaking of a movie that probably has a lot more human heart uh, that's one that's coming out and we should have a review for soon uh, that's civil war. Yeah, anger in the human heart. Yes. And division, division and strife. Strife, um, all of that. This is a movie that I'm looking for. Like, like, I review most of the big movies. Like, I see movies whether I really want to or not. And a lot of them I just don't want to see. I see it. Uh, you know, I, I take the bullet, I do it. Thanks, this Daniel. is one of the ones that have come up that is like, hey, I'm, I'm interested in this movie. Like, so like, yeah, that to me, at least based on the, the trailers, it just seems really fascinating. Yeah, like it might be terrible, it might be offensive, it might be whatever, but like, it's gonna be something. And like, as someone that sees lots of movies to yeah. review, like, that's what I want. Like, yeah. I want something that's gonna be interesting. Like, give me something to talk about in the review. And like, this is an interesting concept. Uh, so we will have a definitely have a review for that. Another one that I did see that we'll have a review for, um, which actually might be out uh, when this episode uh, drops. One that I saw is Irina's Irina's Vow. Uh, this is a uh, it's kind of more of like an indie, I like guess, not a main line release. Like I think it's being released through Fathom Events, and then I think hopefully they're hoping to get a, a wider uh, distribution for it. Uh, but it's just a really good. I mean, it's a faith-based uh, story, perhaps, but it's it's like a true story of a Polish nurse who like has to hide and try and save like a bunch of Jewish people, and 
and it's it's just really like it's a it's set an in World War Two. World War Two, yeah. Uh, you know, true story, and it's just good. Like it's it's just yeah. a powerful. It's just like a you know, it's it's a well made film, but m more than that, it's just like it's a good story. Uh, it is like you know, it's, it's like an R rated movie, so like there's not language, but they they don't. There is some like shocking violence and stuff that like, which I think works with the movie. And again, I'll have my review, so check it out of why yeah. I think that uh, is consistent. But it is one that probably people won't be as familiar with because I don't think it's, you know, there's not a whole lot of like, trailers playing and stuff. But I do think it is one um, that is worth checking out uh, for Christians. But something else that I know all Christians and even people who don't have faith should want to check out is what you're going to share in the next segment. We have things we like that you should like too. Well, Daniel, I do think this is something, uh, a little uh, snippet of something that I think uh, everyone will, will like, I, at least hopefully find interesting. Um, I, I've been on a bit of a binge uh, lately uh, on a podcast that I, I kind of listen to on and off, um, but they had a segment on Martin Luther, the um, uh, monk of the 16th century, I think, uh, terrible dates but uh so the podcast is called the rest is history um it's a couple of uh british guys chatting about history it's incredibly fascinating and also just funny like because they have a really great sort of rapport with each other and uh it, so it's, it's quite entertaining but they did a whole i think like five or six part series on martin luther um who you know famously sort of began the the Reformation, um, and really does a deep dive on who he was, kind of how he came to be, the events sort of surrounding his life. And I just found it uh, incredibly fascinating about how, like, you know, these icons of faith that um, kind of become one-dimensional, um, th you know, throughout history because we're sort of so far removed from the time that they lived. And uh, it's just really revealing about, you know, like Martin Luther was sort of just a, a human. <laughs> and I think uh, it's easy for us to sort of just hold people up on pedestals or think certain things about people. And it's like, oh, it was a lot more complicated than sort of just whatever you learned in Sunday school or, you know, whatever sort of brief mention it got in, in history class. So the rest is history podcast especially the uh, segment that they do on Martin Luther. So you mentioned earlier like a rule of thumb, like a general principle for life. Another one that I would add is it's good to hear and like, listen to and learn history, but if you can do it with some British accents, yeah, that is definitely a step up. That, that really does. You know, it makes a huge difference. I feel far more uh, superior and smarter having listened to it uh, from people with British accents. See, because I almost feel the opposite. Like, I hear people like they can say they can like read a phone book in a British accent. It's like that guy's so smart. Oh yeah, he's so distinguished. And then like, I talk, and it's like, yeah, I'm not that. Like, <laughs> I, I feel worse about myself. Yeah, yeah. It you, is a good. I've I think I've listened to uh, some of their episodes. I know my yeah. mom's uh, shout out mom, like is a big fan. Like, yeah. I think one of them, like one of the hosts, is a Christian. Right. Yes, I think so. Yeah, um, I think the other one's not, but but that's why I think they do have an interesting perspective on, yeah, things that are like religious or Christian figures. And well, yeah, and it is just interesting because I I feel like Luther is one that's held up in high esteem in like um, uh, Protestant and uh, Protestant circles, very much villainized as you might expect in Catholic circles. But it's something I'd never thought about was like when Luther came on the scene, there wasn't. It was just like Christian. There wasn't like the Catholic Church, and the pro it was just sort of Christianity, Christendom, and it's just like, oh yeah, like there there wasn't that sort of divide between Catholic Christians and you know Protestant Christians. Yeah, because like the word Catholic just means universal. It's, just, it's right. a way of just it's the church, like you know exactly. Then you trace that back to you know the early church, and it wasn't until it started like the you know, Reformation that we actually start getting more yeah and, yeah uh, so just just really really interesting stuff that you don't think about like the implications of what he did uh and and sort of some of the stuff that we're seeing even today for worse perhaps that sort of stem from what luther kind of popularized and set in motion so yeah, so last week i shared uh in the uh progressive german power metal and you share like 
Christian history and, and meaningful stuff. Um, I mean, are they not one in the same day? So I'll, hey, both uh, centered in Germany. So it, uh, there you go. Listen, we have a theme going on. Yeah. Uh, but another thing that we have going on is that you have been joining us for these podcasts, and so we appreciate that. Now, these have been fun to do. There's always stuff uh, going on. We're excited for you know every week just to dig into um, you know from a Christian perspective. How can we have these conversations? With love, if you haven't done so, you know, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and you know, leave us a good five star review. And uh, even more important than that, you know, send us an email, send us a comment. Uh, have any questions? We'd love to like, dialogue about stuff, or if you have any ideas for topics for future episodes, we're always uh, game for that. But thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week for more conversations on faith and pop culture. Mm-hmm.